All right, good to see everyone once again. Shabbat Shalom. And I would like to direct our attention as we begin here tonight on the subject of the law, the law, the Sinai Covenant, and specifically the law regarding Shabbat, a great subject, Shabbat. And as we approach this subject, it is vitally important to know and remember that there are two dimensions of the law. And I want to write this up here on this whiteboard. So we'll put here the law. Okay? There are two dimensions. Two aspects of the law. One is called the letter. The letter of the law. And the other is called the spirit of the law. And it's important to keep this in mind. These two dimensions are very, very important to keep in mind. And I'd like to give two examples regarding the law concerning Shabbat, okay? Because we're going to be looking at Shabbat tonight. And two examples. One example is the letter of the law, okay? I want to read to you, or you know, you can open up to Exodus chapter 35. Exodus 35 verses 1 and 2, to see an example of the letter of the law, okay? This is statute law. Remember, God said, these are my statutes and judgments, okay? This is a statute that we're going to read right here, Exodus 35, 1 and 2. Then Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said to them, these are the words which the Lord has commanded you to do. Work shall be done for six days, but the seventh seventh day shall be holy for you, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it shall be put to death. That is a statute. That's a law. This is law. Certain laws in Canada. If you do it, you break it, there's penalties. That's the letter of the law. And so we see the letter of the law here. If you break it, it is death. How many are glad that we're not under the letter of the law right now? You know, when we consider the death penalty, that's about as serious as it gets. Does it get more serious than the death penalty? Okay, well, he said it, but does he really mean it? Does he really mean it? You know, in Canadian law, I was on the phone with our lawyer. He explained this to me, not because of my message we were just talking about. And he said, there's two kinds of laws in Canada. There's statute law, which is something like we just read. It's right in the books. And then there is common law. Common law is law set by precedent, by judges in the past who set a precedent for interpreting the law. That's precedent law, and that's valid. So there's statute law, and there's precedent law, or common law. All right, well, let's look at Numbers chapter 15 to see he said it, but does he really mean it? Will the judge interpret it that way? Okay, how will it be judged in court? All right, let's take it to court. Numbers 15. Verse 32, now while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, 
they found a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath day. And those who found him gathering sticks brought him to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation. They put him under guard because it had not been explained what they should do with him. He broke the Sabbath. What do we do? Then the Lord said to Moses, the man must surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones outside the camp. So as the Lord commanded Moses, all the congregation brought him outside the camp and stoned him with stones, and he died. Well, there it is. That is the judgments of the Lord. These are the statutes and the judgments that Moses set before the people of Israel. So the Sabbath laws were pretty serious, very serious. So we have both statutory law and law set by precedent establishing the death penalty for breaking Shabbat. Now I have a little thing here um, on capital punishment. Now in Canada, I think capital punishment was outlawed in 1968. That was the last person that was put to death by the death penalty in Canada. But in the United States, it's still on. And the United States federal government lists 41 capital offenses that are punishable by death. Most of them boil around three major categories. The death penalty for espionage, spies get put to death. The um, capital or the death penalty for treason, if you are a traitor to the country and you get caught, you can be put to death. And many areas of murder. Those are the three areas calling for the death penalty. So when we consider the letter of the law, Concerning Shabbat, God must consider it a pretty serious thing. That's the letter of the law. But I want us to take a look now at the spirit of the law. It's real intent. It's essence. And this verse that I want to look at is the best commentary that I can find on what Shabbat really means to God. And it's in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 58. This is the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of God coming through the prophet Isaiah, giving clarity, giving the spirit of Shabbat. And this is the fasting chapter. So it's in context with fasting. And in, in essence, you know, Shabbat is a bit of a fast from the world, from work, from the world, from the routine, right? So Isaiah 58, verse 13, the Spirit of God speaking through Isaiah, saying, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words, then your delight, uh, you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. The mouth of yud heh vav has spoken. Wow. That's a whole different side of Shabbat. And so on this side, we have death. On this side, we have delight. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. That 
is the spirit of Shabbat. You know, when it says you shall delight, well, we'll look at that later. Now, when Yeshua said, Yeshua said in Matthew 5, 17, do not think that I came to abolish the law and the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. What did he mean? Yeshua fulfilled the law by perfectly keeping the letter of the law. He was the only man who perfectly kept the letter of the law without deviation. In a perfect way, he fulfilled the law, the letter of the law, by keeping it perfectly. Not only that, when he was put to death, he took in his own body the penalty of the law. Remember, we just read, if you break Shabbat, you're going to be put to death. Yeshua not only fulfilled the letter, but he took the punishment of the letter upon himself to remove it from us. That's what Yeshua did. And having both fulfilled the law and taking the penalty of the law in himself, he then established a new and a better covenant for those who believe. Amen? This is the new covenant in my blood. Under the new covenant, we are not legally bound to the letter of the law. Under the new covenant, we're not legally bound. In other words, if you're under the new covenant, you don't have to worry about being put to death if you break Shabbat. You know, if you stumble, you did something, whatever, you're not going to be put to death. The Levites are not going to come and arrest you. Okay? So we're not under the letter of the law. But... God calls us to fulfill the spirit of the law. The spirit of the law is valid today. It's called the righteous requirement of the law. And I want us to look in the New Covenant, Romans chapter 8, to see this. So, we're taking the Shabbat law, for example. We're not legally bound to the letter of Shabbat, but we are to keep the spirit of Shabbat. Okay? Very important. Romans 8, verses 1 to 4. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Messiah Yeshua. Amen? No death penalty for breaking the law. There's no condemnation. Yeshua took it in his body. For those who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Messiah Yeshua has made me free from the law of sin and death. We are free from the letter of the law. Because of Yeshua fulfilling it and taking the penalty of it in his body. And then he goes on to explain. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Meaning that our flesh was weak and could not keep the law. So God sent Messiah to keep the law perfectly. That's what it means. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Here's the key verse, verse 4. All of this was done, verse 4, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, 
but according to the Spirit. God holds up a standard that you and I must fulfill the righteous requirement of the law, which is the spirit of the law, the highest of which is you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's the two, that is the spirit of the law, and yet the spirit of the law is contained in the other laws. In other words, we can learn how to love God with all of our heart through the principle of Shabbat. The Shabbat is not done away with. The letter is, but the spirit remains. Okay? So that is my introduction to this message. As we continue in this series dunamis from deuteronomy we're now looking at the ten commandments last week we saw that the essence what god intended in the ten commandments was intelligent and intentional love for god and for our neighbor or you shall love your neighbor as yourself that's what we learned last time in looking at the first three commandments. And as I restudied this fourth commandment about Shabbat, as I restudied this, and to tell you the truth, I went through virtually every or almost just about every single verse in the Bible about Shabbat and got this profile trying to get the mind of the Lord, Lord, what did you intend for us in Shabbat? What is your intent? What is the mind of the Lord about it? And I was amazed to discover that in Shabbat, all three of these loves are contained. You shall, it, it, an intelligent and intentional love for God through Shabbat, an intelligent, intentional love for ourselves, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, and an intelligent and intentional love for our neighbor. And I began to realize, you know what? That's why it's so important. That's why this statute got serious about Shabbat, because love is all over it. Okay? So that's what, that's what we're going to look at tonight. So, first of all, God, who is God the Father, Yeshua the Son, Ruach HaKodesh, the triune God, is to be our first love. Amen? You shall have no other gods before me, no other love before me. He has set one day a week aside and apart for a special focus on that love. This is God's intent. It's very, very personal. Shabbat is very, very personal to God. He set it aside as a day of first love. Let's look again at Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. Let's look at the spirit of Shabbat. It's the Holy Spirit coming through. In verse 13, if you turn away your foot from the Shabbat, what does that mean? If you, if you stop trampling on the Shabbat with everyday matters, stop bringing everyday matters into the Shabbat, Stop bringing work. If you'll stop bringing work and the world and the outward things of life, pull away from the outward, come into the unseen and the spiritual and the eternal realm of God for a day a week. This is God's intent to stir up first love. 
this is, I believe, the essence of it. It's a day for rekindling first love. It's like a husband and a wife setting aside a night for a date night once a week. That's important. That's what this means to God. That our attention, our emotions, and our energies would be focused towards him one day a week. Then he goes on. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day. My day that I've set aside to do your pleasure on my holy day. You know, in a relation, I'm reading a great book, by the way. It's called Boundaries in Marriage. I highly recommend it. Boundaries in Marriage, written by, you know, the guy who produced the book on boundaries, um, a cloud, something, yeah, and, you know, very insightful, but um, a relationship goes two ways, and in this book, he talks about relationships where, you know, let's say the husband thinks it's all about him, that, you know, we, all, we always have to do what I want to do. And if, if I don't want to do it, I'm not interested in doing it. Even if you want to do it, I'm not interested in doing it. Right? Two ways, though, in a healthy relationship. Sometimes we go for Chinese food. I know you don't like it, but sometimes we do it. And then sometimes we go to me va me where you like. Right? Relationship. God is saying... Six days, I'm, I'm in your camp. I'm going to work with you. I'm doing this. But the one day, this is what I want us to do today. Isn't that fair? Isn't that right? It's two-way. This is what I want to do today. Shabbat. This is what I want to do. The Shabbat is about pleasing the Lord. He, consider, he considers it holy. It's set aside for love, for attention, for coming away from the outward, the secular, the work world, and giving our attention and affection. Now, of course, we do this every morning, you know, hopefully meeting with God every morning, but a day set aside for attention. You know what relationship? There's attention. There's a certain degree of affection. Communication. Time together. That's, the, that's what God sees in Shabbat. That's what he wants to do that day. And if you call the Sabbath or the Shabbat a delight, do you know what that word delight is in Hebrew? Oneg. Oneg. That's what oneg means. Delight. Now, we have a delightful team called the oneg team. But if you call the Shabbat an oneg, a delight, you know, that word, that, that's like a first love word, isn't it? Delight. Delighting in the Lord rekindling that delight in the Lord. Call the Sabbath a delight. A delight because it leads us to God and not a burden because it leads us away from everyday life. Oh no, I got to do this. I really want to do my work on my cell phone. I really want to do my work on my cell phone. But God says, I want you to pull away from the cell phone. I want you to pull away, and let's do something I want to do. Delight, call the Shabbat a delight. This is the spirit of Shabbat. It goes on to say, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, 
a day to show honor to the Lord. A Sabbath in spirit and truth honors God. This is intelligent and intentional love. Do you see it? It's relationship. All week long, we're doing what we want to do. We're working. We're, you know, we're doing those things. God says, pull away. Not doing your own ways, your ordinary ways. Not finding your own pleasure instead of spiritual delight. Not speaking your own words. Words that are, you know, kind of worldly or of this world words. Maybe not bad words, but of this world words. He says, if you do this, look in verse 14. Verse 14, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. This is important. This principle, this spirit of Shabbat. You shall delight yourself in the Lord. This is the very thing that God wants. You know, I imagine, you know, a, a husband and a wife and the husband's away on a trip and he calls and says, I'll be home on Saturday. And she says, okay, I'm going to cook us a special meal, set up these candles all day long. She's, she's anticipating his coming and she's prepared for a delightful meal, delightful time together. And he doesn't show up. God is, you know, the feast is set. He's, it's his del- He's preparing for us on Shabbat to pull away and draw near to him. He wants to delight, he delights in you. He wants you to delight in him. Delightful fellowship. That is Shabbat. That's the spirit of Shabbat. Secondly, Shabbat is not only designed for intelligent and intentional love for God, but it's designed for intelligent and intentional love for ourselves. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. God designed it this way. Look in Exodus uh, Exodus 23. Exodus 23, verse 12. Six days you shall do your work, and on the seventh day you shall rest, that your ox and your donkey may rest, and the son of your female servant and the stranger may be refreshed. The spirit of Shabbat for us is rest and being refreshed. To rest and to be refreshed. You know, it says in Genesis 2, verse 2, that God rested on the seventh day and was refreshed. Rest and refreshment on Shabbat. The word refresh is the word nafash. That's the word nefesh, the breath, that he breathed in us, uh, the nefesh, the, the wind. Nafash means to breathe or to be refreshed as if by a current of air. You know, I was on this machine at the gym and really, you know, hot and so forth. And then I realized, hey, there's a fan on this thing. And I put the fan on and wow, that, that breeze refreshed me while I was on that machine. It's a refreshing breath, a wind of refreshing, like a cool breeze that refreshes us. That's the spirit of Shabbat as it relates to loving ourselves. On Shabbat, we give rest to our bodies from the day to day. The body is like a seven-day clock that must be rewound. It works for six days, 
It's got to be rewound on the seventh. The body is like a sensitive musical instrument that plays well for six days, but it's got to be retuned on the seventh day. Amen? We're also refreshed in our emotions. And we give our minds some different stimulus and focus, otherwise we get stale. I recently read a book called Iconoclast. An iconoclast is someone that does something that others say can't be done. In other words, he's a breakout mindset, a breakout kind of individual that's able to just... And it was written by a a brain guy, a neurosurgeon, neurologist, more nerves, but... a brain guy. I don't know if he was a surgeon, but he's an expert in the brain. And he studied men and women who were like breakthrough people. And one of the things he said is that their perspective is different. And he gave advice on how to get a new mindset about things. He said, you got to get out of your everyday routine. You got to bombard your mind with stimulus that is different and get you thinking a different way and then you see this and this suddenly oh wow I see a relationship here that you couldn't see if you were in your regular day to day Shabbat is for breakthroughs fresh new perspectives on things it's important to be refreshed. I read an article by a guy who said the seven day work week experiment. So he said, you know what? I'm going to experiment by working seven days a week. And the seven day work routine, he did the same thing every day. He worked out every day. He worked every day. And you know what happened. His muscles. You can't do it. You can't work out seven days in a row, right? We know that. And so his, um, you know, basically, I burned out even with lots of breaks. That's what he said after seven days. And then he said, after trying a seven-day work week, I became quite fascinated by the concept of a day of rest. He realized it doesn't work. We're not designed that way. He's not a believer. He said, I'm no expert on the Bible, uh, but with a little research, I found the origin of the seventh day where it's the Sabbath. The principle of Shabbat is important for us. When we rest, our minds, our spirits, our souls become more fertile. Could you put up Ecclesiastes 10? Verse 10, I love this verse. If the iron axe is blunt and one doesn't sharpen the edge, he's got to exert more force. So wisdom has the advantage of giving success. Taking a Shabbat is sharpening the axe. It may not feel like it, resting, but in fact, your mind, your emotions, You're primed, you're rested, you're sharper through Shabbat. And so we love ourselves by taking a break from the work week, from the world and so forth. And we're rested and refreshed. And then finally... Shabbat is designed for intelligent and intentional love for our neighbor. Even though through Yeshua, we each have our own individual walk with God, like this. We are still called to walk it out in the midst of community. Someone who is not a part of a community is missing a huge thing in their life. Look in Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus 23. 
want you to see this in the Torah. Leviticus 23, verses 1 to 3. Bring Shabbat into one of the feasts. Shabbat is a feast, okay? And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, The feasts of the Lord which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, these are my feasts. And here's the first one. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest. And what else? A holy convocation. This is another dimension of Shabbat. The word convocation, a mikra, is a, a call to come together. A public meeting, an assembly. So on Shabbat, not only are we to love God and rest and be refreshed in ourselves, but there's a call to come together. There's a community aspect to Shabbat in which we can love one another. And this call to community is expressed in the New Covenant as well. It's in the New Covenant. Hebrews chapter 10 Verse 24 and 25. Hebrews 10, verse 24. It says, and let us consider one another. In other words, it's not just about your walk with the Lord. Not just about your ministry. Not just about your needs. That's important. God's going to meet them. But it says, let us consider one another. In order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another all the more as you see the day draw near. There it is. Shabbat. Right here. It doesn't say Sabbath, but the principle of Shabbat is right here. And we are called to fulfill the righteous requirement of the law by walking in the spirit of Shabbat. Because in this coming together, there is an identification. In the Tanakh, and we're not going to turn there, Exodus 31 verse 13 says, the Sabbath is a sign between me and you. In other words, God and Israel. A covenant sign. It's an identifying sign. He is God. We are his people. Here we are. Israel. Gathered together on Shabbat before the Lord. It's a sign of identification with the nation of Israel. In the new covenant, the same way we come together in Messiah. We identify as one of his. He is our Messiah. We, are, we belong to him. Here we are. Here we are. Just raise your hand for a minute. Here we are. Say, Lord, here, here we are. We're here identifying. We're an identifiable group in Messiah. We're a messianic, we're messianic believers. Some of us are messianic Jewish believers. Others are messianic believers from the nation. But we're together identifying. Here we are on Shabbat, not forsaking the assembling of together, but considering one another, as it says, and so we must not neglect this. In coming together, we're told to consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. That's part of the spirit of Shabbat. This is intelligent and intentional love for your fellow believer. Your fellow believer, your neighbor, your presence on Shabbat matters. It matters. 
Your identification with others in the house of God matters. We're together. We're called together. We're not just here for ourselves. We're here to make an impact in this community. Especially the Jewish community. Your effort to stir up love and good works in the house of God matters. It matters. Think about the letter of the law. It's serious. The spirit of the law, it's serious. Love fulfills the law. It is lawful for you to do good on Shabbat. In just a moment, we're going to have prayer lines. People can be healed. It's lawful to heal on Shabbat. Amen. Many examples in the New Testament. It's lawful to pray for one another, to encourage one another, to care for one another. That's the spirit of Shabbat. And so... I want to close by saying that this is Shabbat in spirit and in truth. A day to keep fresh our first love, to delight ourselves in the Lord. A day of rest and a day for us to be refreshed, body, soul, and spirit. Re refreshed in body, renewed in our emotions and in our mind. A day to gather together with other believers to identify with those who are called out of darkness and to stir up love and good works. This is Shabbat in spirit and in truth. And I want to close with a question. Who is Lord of your Shabbat? Yeshua said, I am Lord of the Shabbat. My question, is he Lord of your Shabbat? Lord, I want to thank you for this amazing revelation of Shabbat. This amazing revelation of Shabbat. And I thank you for it. I thank you for the the breadth of the scriptures. We didn't cover everything, but we covered a great deal of ground here tonight. We've spoken about the letter of the law, how serious you were about Shabbat, that you required the death penalty for those who would break Shabbat. And we thank you that we're no longer under the letter of the law, but we want to have ears to hear how we can fulfill the spirit of the law in our days. And I ask you to touch each and every person here tonight that we would have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying, what this Shabbat means to each one of us and to our congregation and to the Lord. In Yeshua's name, 